so this is uh, joint work uh, by Yi Ming Su and Michael Norrish on mechanized model uh, uh, model model theory. So the model model theory of model logic. Today we are talking about mechanized model model theory. This is a piece of work on the mechanization of model logic, which is done in the theorem proof Hall four. Our contribution is the first to talk about model model theory in detail. For a brief overview of our work, we mechanize a number of results in the standard textbook with this cover, called Model Logic, which is written by Blackman et al. Among the mechanized results, there is a particularly complicated one about countably saturated models. For this proof, we proved a bunch of results in whole about ultra products. By the end of our work, we have a close approximation to one Bentham characterization theorem. Why it is a close approximation instead of the theorem itself will be explained by the end of the talk. To get started, we created an inductive type called form for all the model formulas. We are only considering propositional model logic with countably many propositional letters. So the propositional letters are represented by natural numbers. Therefore, a model formula of the form v little m n is just a propositional letter standing alone. Also note that we are only considering the basic model language throughout the whole work. That is, the diamond as shown in the last constructor is our only model operator. If we really want to talk about any model operator with any everything, then we should change the last constructor so it takes an extra parameter indexing the model operators. A model of these model formulas consists of a frame and a valuation. A beta frame is simply a set with elements of type beta, which is considered as a set of possible rules or states, together with a relation on the word set. A type here is essentially the same thing as a continuing set for the words in the model. If you take beta to be the real numbers, then your model can be over uncountably many words. The valuation, which is written as word in Hall, tells us the truth value of propositional letters on each word. Here is an example of a model which is taken from the textbook. There are five words A, B, C, D, E. The relations are denoted by the arrows, and the valuation of propositional letters is labeled at the words. Satisfaction is defined as an inductive predicate with three parameters. For model M, a word W, and the model formula phi, we will write MW satisfied phi if phi is satisfied at W in M. Among the clauses displayed here, the only interesting case is the last one, which is about the semantics of the diamond. We define diamond phi to be satisfied at W in M if W is a word in M. And there exists a word V such that W is related to V and phi is satisfied at V. If two words satisfy exactly the same model formulas, we will say they are model equivalent and write this symbol. We also have a notion of logical equivalence between model formulas. For formulas phi1 and phi2, we define phi1 is equivalent to phi2 if phi1 is satisfied if and only if phi2 is satisfied for any word in a beta model. The type parameter here is necessary because if we omit it, then there will be a type, namely the beta, which appears only on the right-hand side of the definition, but not on the left-hand side. This situation is not a lot in Hall. If we write like this, Hall will just refuse to accept the definition. Also, note that 
This notion of logical equivalence is not precisely the mathematical notion as we will use in set theory. For a mathematical notion, we want phi1 satisfied precisely when phi2 is satisfied not only for beta models, but for all the models regardless their types. That is, we want our definition of equivalence to hold for every type. However, this definition cannot be written into Hall, because the underlying logic of Hall is the simple type theory, where we cannot quantify our types. For a simple example where the difference of the mathematical notion and our definition can be seen, consider proving diamond phi1 is equivalent to diamond phi2 if and only if phi1 is equivalent to phi2. This statement has a very easy proof using set theory. But with our definition, we can only prove it while assuming the type universe of beta is infinite. Here are two very basic properties of model formulas. Firstly, model formulas have the tree-like property. That is, if a formula phi is satisfied in some model, then there is a tree-like model, which is just a model such that the underlying frame is a tree such that the phi is satisfied at the root. Secondly, model formulas have the finite model property. That is, if phi is satisfied in some model, then there will be a model with finite worth set such that the phi is satisfied. For the theorem shown here, we proved it by the rather complicated method of selection. This proof uses the theorem for trainlet property. Therefore, if we want to change our scope to a finite model by using this theorem, the finite model we will get will not be of the same type as the model we started with. But note that selection is not the only way to construct a finite model. If we construct the finite model by filtration, then it is possible to avoid the change of type. The notion of bisimulation is very interesting for model model theory. For two words, W in N and V in N, W and V are bisimilar if they satisfy exactly the same propositional letters, and once we can make a transition from one of W or V, we can always make a corresponding transition from the other word. In this case, we will write this symbol to denote bisimulation. By induction of model formulas, bisimilar words a model equivalent. As the most significant theorem for the basic theory of bisimulation, Hynes and Miller theorem says that for image finite models, bisimulation and model equivalence coincide. Here, image finite models are just models such that for each word W, the set of words that W is related to is finite. Model logic is not an isolated branch of logic. Started at section 2.4 of the textbook, model logic and first order logic are treated together. Therefore, we will also need some basics for first order logic. To do this part, we used Harris's earlier work on first order model theory, in particular, his proof of compactness. To interpret a first order formula phi, in a first order model M. We will need to assign the free variables in phi some actual values in M. This assignment is done by a function sigma. When phi is interpreted to be true in M under sigma, we will write M sigma entails phi. In Harris's work, every function symbol, predicate symbol, and variable symbol is denoted by a natural number. And for our purpose, we are only interested in Elwental formulas. They are first order formulas with no function symbols. In particular, these formulas have no constant, since a constant is just a null function symbol. No predicate symbol with arity more than 2, only one predicate symbol with arity 2, which is to be interpreted as a relation on some model model and they can have all the unary predicate symbols which correspond to the propositional letters. 
when talking about equivalence between first order formulas, we will decorate the symbol of equivalence with a little f. The bridge between modal logic and first order logic is called the standard translation. ST is a function that takes a variable symbol, say x, a modal formula phi, and gives the first order formula, which is a standard translation of phi, on x. There will be no other free variables in this formula, and for every modal formula, its standard translation will be a one tau. Accordingly, we can convert a modal model into a first order model using the function mm24m. After the conversions, we can reformulate model certification as phi is satisfied at w in n if and only if the standard translation of phi on x holds in the model obtained by viewing m as a first order model when x is assigned w. When Bensham characterization theorem is a theorem about both by simulation and standard translation, it says a first order formula delta x is equivalent to some standard translation on x if and only if it is invariant for by simulation. For the definition of invariant for by simulation, an A1 tau formula delta x is said to be invariant for by simulation if once w and v are by similar words. Delta x holds at w if and only if it holds at v. We will write u bar four by sim x alpha beta delta. If w and v we are considering here all of type alpha and beta respectively, we should compare this theorem to an earlier result. Hanessy Miller theorem, which we have mentioned before says that by similar words in image finite models make the same formula true. Here we see that a particular formula is invariant if its truth value is the same on any pair of by similar words from models that may not image finite. For the proof of the theorem, the easy direction, seeing that standard translations are invariant for by simulation, is immediate from the fact that by similar words are model equivalent, and reformulation of model certification via standard translation. As for the hard reaction, there are two main ingredients. The first one is the compactness of first order logic, and the second one is the construction of ultra products. This construction is required for two critical lemmas, including the most complicated and constructive one, seeing that for a family of non-empty model models, their ultra product on a countably incomplete ultra filter is countably saturated when regarded as a first order model. Although we are ultimately interested in the ultra product of models, we should begin by introducing the ultra product of set families. To give this definition, we should define ultra filters first. An ultra filter U on a numpty set J is a set of subsets of J such that J is in U, and for each subset X of J, either X or its complement is in U. Intuitively, an element in an ultra filter U on J can be thought as a large subset of J. Indeed, if X is considered to be a larger part of J, then its complement will be considered as a smaller part and vice versa. An index set family is captured by a function in Hall. This function takes an index and gives us the actual set indexed by it. For a set family A is indexed by J, we define its Cartesian product to be the set of functions f, such that for each J in capital J, fj is in its J. For two functions f and j in the Cartesian product, we will say they are u equivalent and write this symbol if the set of j's that f and j agree is in u. That is, according to the intuition of the Lauter filter, if f and j agree on most of elements in j, where the sense of most is measured by the Lauter filter u. 
The outer product of the family is, for the U, is a quotient of the Cartesian product by U equivalence. Here comes the definition of ultra product of model models. Given a family M of model models indexed by J and an ultra filter U on J, the ultra product of M model U is defined as follows. The word set will just be the ultra product of family of word sets of the models. For notation, we will write the equivalence class that F belongs to as F with a capital U on the corner. For two words, FU and GU in the ultra product, which are actually two equivalence classes, they are related if there exist representatives F0 in FU, J0 in GU, such that the set of J's that F0J is related to J0J in MSJ is large. For the valuation, our proxy show letter P is satisfied at FU if there is a representative F0 in FU, such that the set of J's that P is satisfied at F0J in MSJ is large. We are interested in the certification of model formulas in the ultra product model. The certification is characterized by Wurf theorem. The model version of Wurf theorem says, if M is a family of model models and U is an ultra filter on J, then for word FU in the ultra product model, phi is satisfied at FU if and only if there is a representative F0 in FU such that the set of J's that V is satisfied at F0J in MSJ is large. It should be possible to derive the model version of Wurf theorem from the first law version by using standard translation, but we proved it directly by induction on model formulas. Actually, we have also mechanized the first law version, which is just the standard version. Both of the two versions are required for the proof of the height reaction of Van Bessen characterization theorem. After constructing ultra products in Hall, we can prove the two critical lemmas, which will eventually lead us to the proof of the height direction of the mean theorem. However, with both of the two directions by hand, we still cannot get the theorem itself, which is an if and only if. Here is the reason. Following the proof in the textbook, we will get the following two theorems. The first one is for the easy direction, and the second one is for the hard direction, where the assumption on the infiniteness of type universe is introduced due to the application of compactness theorem. As an attempt of getting an if and only if, let us try reverse the first theorem. That is, assume delta is invariant for by simulation on type alpha. We want to prove delta is equivalent to a standard translation. However, as the type num to alpha to bool is larger than alpha, our assumption is too weak for us to use the second theorem here to get the result. If we try to reverse the second theorem, then assume delta is equivalent to a standard translation. We want to prove delta is invariant for by simulation for num to alpha to bo. But using the first theorem, we can only get the result that delta is invariant for by simulation for type alpha. If num to alpha to bo is small enough to be embedded into alpha, then we will die as well but it is larger than alpha, so we cannot just inject it into alpha and fix the base type. By conclusion, these two theorems do not yield an if and only if in Hall. We believe this problem will be resolved if we are working in a theorem plural which allows dependent type theory. When we could quantify all types, we could also omit all the type parameters in all these definitions. And using the same proof as in the textbook, we can get the Van Bessen characterization theorem itself. So, why did we do this in Hall at all? Well, 
we can always get something by doing this work. It will certainly be happy if all of these results can be proved in whole, because then we can demonstrate that although simple type theory is a rather weak system, it can still capture all these results. But it will still be valuable to identify what cannot be captured in whole, and then we will get some interesting questions, such as for the things which cannot be captured in whole, what can we do for them? Is it possible to come up with some smart method and get a perhaps weakened if and only if, etc. As a summary of our work, we mechanized some fundamental propositional model model theory. The focus on models is novel. Previous work in mechanizations of model logic have centered on proof systems and application in model checking. We have mechanized every theorem in chapter 1 and 2 of Blackburn et al which can be captured by the whole logic and is about the basic model language. The only exceptions are listed below. The first one is the result in section 2.6 about definability. To do this part in whole, we will need to define the concept of a class of models being closed undertaking ultra products. Taking the ultra product is not an operation which can be performed within the same type. Therefore, we do not think that we can capture this concept in whole. The second one is the result about safety in section 2.7. We skip it simply because it is not about the basic model language, but is about the language DDL. Finally, when by some characterization theorem, and actually a result about positive existential formulas in section 2.7 of the same pattern, are the only two mechanized results such that two implications cannot be put together into an if and only if due to the type issue. Thank you. I'm happy to answer any questions. So are there any questions? You can uh, perhaps raise your hand or, or, or ask a question in the Q&A section. Okay, so uh, let me let me start with a with a uh, question. Iming, can you hear me? Hi, can you hear me? Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. All right. So uh, thank you for the for the very nice presentation. Thank you very much. Um, so I, I was wondering. This is this is quite interesting. You have actually. Uh, 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 fought with the limits of of whole right so essentially you have all these results presented uh, a tech, these textbook results most of them or all of them they can be they can be uh, 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 expressed in termelo frankel set theory this is sort of the the, the usual assumption and then yeah. you formalized uh, uh, many of these in whole which is roughly equivalent to Termelo set theory. So it, it, it uh, replaces the replacement axiom more or less with a, with a separation axiom. Yeah. So, uh, but I also, I also faced this when I was working with, with some uh, whole formalizations. And I always notice or, or very often notice that I had to strengthen the result a little bit and it goes through in whole. So you had these examples with an if and only if, which cannot be directly expressed, but it's actually ca captured in two different uh, uh, statements. Um, and, you, uh, and you had this difficulty with the class of models, right? Closed under uh, uh, alter products. Yeah, because we cannot capture, um, in, types, in simple type theory, everything is a set and uh, we, have, we do not have class. Right, but I'm, I'm wondering if you can, uh, if there is a way to strengthen this result, uh, perhaps talk about uh, a closed class of models of certain bounded cardinality, right? So if you put a cardinal bound, perhaps you can you can formulate a bounded version of this result. Uh, yeah, that is what, um, yeah, that is what I have tried before, but the problem is that um, we cannot preserve the cardinality uh, we cannot take the ultra product and preserve the cardinality. Say if we have, if we take um, a class of models, and uh, among them, all of the models have used up all the every element, 
in this type, then this will, this type will not be enough to capture all these elements. So we must need we need a very very large type. Yeah, but it's um, yeah. I right. have difficulty, but I'm I will certainly be very happy if someone um, tells me how to fix this. I'm happy to proceed in this if this can be resolved. Yeah. Very interesting. Yeah. So there, there are these developments. There's this whole omega, right? That uh, that uh, extends whole, and also there is this more li this uh, more lightweight extension with pretty much exactly what you want. Uh, and I think they have they have uh, 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 used this in whole four for this uh, KML uh, uh, effort. When they verified whole in whole, basically they want something like a, the type of all whole, whole types or something like uh, a, a sufficiently large type. So this this may be, may be a way to, basically you could axiomatize uh, a certain sufficiently large type and uh, perhaps extend this to capture this result as well. I think it's yeah, think... John Harrison's work, uh, uh, this, this, this idea of, of, of a lightweight extension of whole. Yeah, say, yeah, say in Lean, we will say mm, there is type one, type two, type three, type four. Right, yeah. right, right. Yeah, so you can get a type yeah. one, you can get a type type one or type two <laughs> on, on yeah. a new basis, so to speak. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Are there any more questions? All right, then. Then uh, thank you very much again.